Fuck Mac. Today I'm introducing a segment that I'm going to lovingly refer to as clips and rips. That because I'm going to open some packs, hence the rip piece of the segment, while also discussing some clips or internet content of my choosing. And this because I so desperately long to be a YouTube commentary channel, yet here I am, uh, committed to Pokemon and all things Pokemon related, and I will try to blend the two in some sort of enjoyable fashion. Today I'm opening this Chilling Rain booster box, and then I went to Costco in hopes of finding what I saw on some other YouTube channels, a Evolving Skies ETB set with a tin, and I didn't find that. What I found was this uh, five pack of tins that also came, each of these five packs came with some promo cards, and they were $30 a piece. So these tins are usually like 11 or $12, so it seemed like a pretty good deal. You're getting two packs in each tin, 10 packs and some promos and the tin stuff for 30 bucks. That's less than $3 pack or around $3 pack. So let's get into it. The clip that I want to discuss today is the uh, actually a documentary that I just watched last night on Netflix. Some of you may have seen it and it is called Kai the Hatchet Wielding Hitchhiker, something along those lines. And it is about a kind of viral sensation from, I wanna say this was back in the early days of Facebook. So it was like, what, 2009 or 2010, 2012, somewhere around then. This guy named Kai, who was a homeless man um, and pretty young, was hitchhiking around the country, basically. And you've probably seen his most viral clip where he says he wants to like, or he, that he uh, smashed, smash, 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 I think was the most viral cut of the, the specific news interview that he was on. Smash, smash, smash. Yeah, the, the lady said you said. But here's what happened. He was hitchhiking across the country and then in one particular hitchhiking encounter, he gets in the car with this guy. They start um, doing potentially non-legal substances together while they're driving along and then this guy kind of loses his mind the guy that he's he's hitchhiking with and runs into a pedestrian pinning him against another vehicle and then he gets out when i say he i'm referring to the man that kai was riding with that man gets out and starts to whoa okay what just happened I got something here. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, delicate, buddy. Delicate. It is a gold secret rare. It's called Path to the Peak. It's a really pretty card. Uh, and I don't have it. So great. That was from Astral Radiance. Maybe not my first pick of secret rares, but you gotta just take what the cards give you, you know? Back to the story. This guy gets out. He's he's just having like a manic episode. He's he's claiming all sorts of wild things, saying all sorts of obscenities, and he starts attacking these two women. At which point, Kai, the hitchhiker guy, gets out of the car and he has a hatchet with him. Don't ask me why. He just does, and he starts attacking this man who was just seconds ago giving him a ride. He starts attacking that man in order to save these innocent bystanders, these two women in particular. And when I say attacking, yeah, he's using, whoa. All right, we're doing pretty good with these tins. Astral Radiance, be good to me, Roxanne. Roxanne. Yeah, he attacks him with the hatchet. That's why he kind of blows up as Kai the Hatchet Wielding Hitchhiker. And it's this feel-good American tale of a guy seemingly down on his luck who knows what kind of seedy pasts or stories he has to tell but in this particularly critical moment he saves these two women and this man and no one was I guess damaged beyond repair even the guy that got attacked with the hatchet um, the perpetrator, he ends up surviving, but has some hatchet wounds, 
And Kai becomes an internet sensation. Back when going viral, uh, it maybe even meant more than it did today because the internet was relatively new and it seemed like there was a lot less manufact manufactured virality, more just kind of authentic things like this, things the local news would report on. Some Something kind of remarkable happens, the local news reports on it, and then the internet takes it a whole nother step further to where video clips get made. This was in that era where everything became like a weird auto-tune song. Ooh, Radiant Greninja. Almost missed the guy. Careful with those Radiants. They blend right in. And so there was an auto-tune auto song for Smash, Smash, Smash. There were a bunch of memes about the guy. He's a really unique looking character. He looks kind of like Sean White. He wears a bandana. He's always kind of... But... The documentary follows what happens from then on, which is this dude blows up who's literally a homeless man and he's young. Everyone wants to believe, oh my gosh, this 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 might turn this guy's life around. Like here he has a bit of fame and success and he's going to get invited to do appearances and probably make some money out of this. And what was a terrible situation, this young kid being homeless, may, maybe this turns it all around. He becomes a functional member of society. I think this was the hope um, of a lot of the people surrounding the situation. Also, their hope was let's use this dude to like get some clicks and get some views. And so that's definitely a piece of it as well. There's maybe a bit of ex uh, coercion, coercion. I don't know, just typical stuff. Just, hey, let's use this guy to get clicks. It's a feel good story. People like it. He goes on Jimmy Kimmel even, but leading up to his Kimmel appearance, the handlers of this guy or the people that are like tasked with bringing him in start to realize like, this is not a normal guy. Like this is not an adjusted human. He's constantly urinating on stuff. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Okay. We're doing pretty well so far out of these blisters from these tins. He's constantly urinating on public property, pulling out a skateboard in the middle of like really fancy hotels and lobbies, getting kicked out of places. He really is not at all governed by the societal norms and just actual laws that govern the rest of us. You know, half of what we do, we do just because there's these invisible societal expectations that we behave a certain way. There's even within the law, a lot of really weird ways that you could behave just out and about around town when you go to the store. There's all sorts of weird things you could do that aren't necessarily illegal, but would really catch people off guard and make them uncomfortable. And so typically we don't do those things because we have at least a little bit of awareness to know that's going to make people uncomfortable. This guy has none of that. He is free from the fetters of societal expectation and pressure in a way freer than any of us will ever be but that freedom comes with a price the price of not really being able to integrate at all with any of the structures of society hence him being homeless like it starts to make a lot more sense he cannot fit within a single system and you start to realize like it's in instances like this where i know there's a lot of systemic issues that we face because systems become very powerful and then they can oppress us, all of us, but specific people in specific situations. But the system's power is a function of productivity and efficiency and being able to get things done in an orderly fashion. When the system has no power, you'd have like anarchy basically you'd have a world of kais where there are no systems holding people together holding them in place everyone's just an independent vector shooting in whatever direction they want it, it's chaos and some people might kind of enjoy a chaotic world like that and i think kai was one of them he's he like the 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 guy who first interviewed him which was another really unique situation he gives this incredible first interview and he's exceptionally charismatic but once again not consistently just sporadically incredibly charismatic there's obviously whoa alternate art are you kidding me from what set 
Fusion Strike, Sandaconda, Alternate Art. I'm loving this. I, I don't know that I've seen luck like this in a very long time. Because we're 20 packs in. I mean, yeah, we have opened a lot of packs. It feels like every hollow we're pulling, though, is like some sort of full art or <laughs> secret rare. We haven't pulled any just regular hollows yet. Haven't gotten any trainer gallery hits either, but I'll take it for an alternate art. This is amazing. So yeah, Kai goes on Kimmel. Kimmel, you start to realize like some of these people that are really famous and have been in the industry for a really long time. Maybe you take them for granted. Maybe you just kind of resent them because they don't appeal to you yet. They're so popular. Kimmel could be one of those guys for you. I don't know. But what you realize is in certain situations, there's a reason why he's as big as he is because he's able to control this character in a very exceptional fashion in a way that none of the people that were like leading up to the moment that he actually appeared on the show could could do and obviously even a guy like kai probably understands the credibility and kind of institutional force that is a guy like jimmy kimmel so maybe that helps but kai you could tell would start to kind of get on a weird little tangent and kimmel would turn it into some sort of joke and rein him back in, quickly change the topic of conversation and keep the interview moving, keep the bit moving, and it went well. And so then after the Kimmel thing, it was like a whole nother level of success and him getting asked to do gigs and travel across the country. He was a talented musician. He could play the guitar and he had written a song. I only saw one song featured in the uh, documentary, but it was a cool song, especially for that era. It seemed like a song that could fit in. You could almost see like a record label being like, we want that song, come record it, trying to blow it up just off the off the back of the virality that was that initial interview and incident. But things start to spiral out of control because that's the peak, you know? You've just given this guy a level of fame and success that he's not really prepared for, nor can he sustain. It's just impossible that this dude, when you really get to see what he looks like, um, 360, not just from the initial clip or interview, he, he's not going to be able to sustain any type of consistent work or he's undisciplined. Like there, there, even if you gave him everything most of us dream of, he, he would squander it just because he, he fundamentally probably is dealing with some challenges mentally and maybe with drug addiction and just the, that's bled into different behavioral disorders that I know from working at treatment centers with like troubled youth, like youth that had both combinations of um, like clinical disorders and then just behaviorally enforced disorders that those things don't just clear up in an instant. It's like a lifelong dedicated approach to get a lot of those issues to go away or to make a more manageable life for yourself. So that wasn't going to happen unless somebody family or friend, somebody really connected to him that really cared about him was willing to work with him every step of the way. And what you realize too in the story is he has no family or friends, no long time connections, because as the, as the initial reporter described, like it's exhausting to be around him for more than five minutes because he, he's so chaotic. I don't know if you guys have ever been around somebody like that, that it's like their energy is so much Woo! This is like one of my favorite VMAXs, by the way. It's just really striking. I think because of the size of that big fireball. But yeah, somebody who's so chaotic that just existing around them, it's like, I don't know, I have a couple of toddlers. I imagine it's like the adult form of a toddler. You're always trying to channel their energy and rein it in, move it in productive directions. With a kid, you expect to do that as a parent. That's par for the course, but you hope that they grow up, they start to learn skills. That becomes less and less of like a constant management type of exercise and more of like they can govern themselves. But imagine an adult that it still feels like that. It's like you got to watch what rooms they go into. You got to like child proof your house so that they don't steal stuff or make a mess of your nice things that's kind of a daunting reality when you consider how long like a human life can be that's that's a burden to put on anyone that's around him and he had kind of distanced himself from his mom and she had put him into like some orphanage or some sort of treatment center when he was 13 just because she couldn't handle 
dealing with him on a day in day out basis and i'm not going to judge her for that i mean certain instances parents should request help i don't know what the facility he ended up going to was like it might not have been the best situation but the point is he didn't have any any long time support so if you haven't seen the documentary you should just watch it because it's going to do a better job than what i'm doing in telling the actual story because i'm kind of just giving my insights into the whole situation here's the number one insight i had watching that and it's for all of us it's not for like a kai or somebody in his position it's for the people that are watching people like this that go viral or blow up or become public figures you got to be careful when you want something to be true. And what I mean by that is everyone wanted this guy who was young. He wasn't even bad looking. He was kind of handsome. He was ripped. He had talent. Everyone wants to think like, oh my gosh, he did this heroic thing. Could it be that this guy who was homeless just days ago actually just had like a rotten hand? in life i mean to some extent he did but maybe maybe just a few things went awry and he ended up in this terrible situation and now we can correct that and he's a great guy and there were all these accounts of him like giving away stuff like he would get a check for 500 dollars from kimmel and he would give it to the security officer which i think he really did um that was after he peed on the jimmy kimmel sign and the security officer had to like tell him to stop so maybe a bit of like making good with that whole situation but you want to believe this guy has had a run of bad luck this is going to turn around he's actually a great guy and he's a hero to us and we we need heroes and we love heroes from unexpected places that's what we wanted to be true that's what everyone wanted to be true some people in the entertainment industry maybe didn't even care that much but they just thought let's ride this out for however long we can and get some clicks but i'm just saying the general public we love stories like that we love redemption arcs like it's it's crazy we love it when powerful people get like brought to their knees but then we also love it when people who have fallen from grace redeem themselves and kind of re attain that level of um notoriety it happens all the time and that's what i would tell if i was like I don't know, a publicist to a celebrity whose career was falling apart. Depending on what the reason was, some things are a little bit irredeemable, but I would say, hey, listen, you're going to like Tiger Woods, best example I can think of. You're going to go through heck, but you were already the best golfer that existed. And now you're going to have an opportunity. It might take several years to actually achieve a level of success that you weren't even able to achieve if this hadn't have happened his accident because now it's a comeback story and how would you have a comeback story as the top dog unless something really brought you back to the bottom sometimes you need that it makes for a more compelling narrative and it makes for a more compelling legacy honestly because if you're just the best the whole time people just start to expect that out of you there's nothing you can do to win them over again but if you lose the ability to walk and then you come back and become the best golfer again, whoa, now it's a whole different deal. And Kai could have been that story. It's like a guy had a really tough childhood, a really tough teenage years, didn't really have any family or support. Then he saves these two women and he gets his life together. And who knows, he could be like a podcast host right now. End of the story is he's in jail because he got arrested for another act of violence. I'll just leave it at that as not to spoil the tale, but he had some problems, some problems that didn't clear up just because he became famous and went on Jimmy Kimmel. And I just always think this, there's always realities that it's like for our own entertainment, we want to be true. And this is super noticeable if you get on TikTok and you start scrolling and you hear some sort of sensationalized gossip or drama, or maybe it's like some weird science that you'd never heard before, but it reinforces some sort of underlying belief that you have. And you're like, I would like that to be true. And if somebody presents it with enough conviction, 
then you'll just believe it is true. And you won't actually do much to challenge that assumption because why would you want to challenge that assumption? You'd rather reality be the way that you want it to be. And uh, that's dangerous. That's a really cool slow king card. And this happens to me all the time too. It's like, sometimes you have a hunch, like somebody, I don't know, something seems too good to be true. Something seems too good to be true. A relationship that you see portrayed online. Uh, Will Smith. <laughs> something seems too good to be true. And sometimes that makes us feel bad because we see something portrayed in such a glamorous fashion it doesn't measure up with the reality that we've all been living in. Sometimes that's aspirational for people, but sometimes that makes them feel when you compare yourself like you're really not measuring up. So then you see somebody like that snap. Maybe that is something you want to believe is true. And maybe you're like, well, now I know he's a bad guy. It was all fake. And even in that situation, because like I said, this is one of my biases when I see things like that. I got to be careful though. Like I could easily be like, well, he showed his true colors. He's a terrible person, blah, blah, blah. And just really reinforce my own biases to make me feel better. That's like, that's the impulse you got to check. Cause what could be the truth is like, you know, he was dealing with some really heavy issues in his personal life, which a lot of those we, we kind of know. He does put on an act of perfection, but a lot of that may be motivated by this pressure that he feels to live up to this status and image that we've all created for him. Maybe that's a bit of a, a prison that he doesn't even know he's living in. And so is there a chance he's not a bad guy? Yeah, there is a chance he's not a bad guy. And even with a story like Kai, can't it be impressive that this kid who's like really a chaotic individual and not somebody that is necessarily a role model, but isn't it inspiring that in this moment, he was able to kind of like summon this courage that most of us don't have, intervene in a situation out of goodness, it would seem, to save these people. I think it's still inspiring. I think the more human um, elements that you wrap around the story, the more inspiring it actually becomes. The more complex it becomes, the more nuanced it becomes, and the less sensational it becomes. And maybe that's why that reality gets undermined, because it wouldn't sell as much. And unfortunately, there is kind of like a machine of like money, which is really power. It's kind of at work governing all the media that gets pushed out to us and that's to be expected i'm not saying that this is some grand conspiracy i'm just saying it's kind of a natural evolution of people who need to hang on to whatever power that they have or whatever money that they have i think we would all feel that honestly i feel this all the time because i'm not like rich and so it's pretty easy to spend money right now, even though I don't have a ton, which is a little bit ironic, but oh, Agatha, that is kind of a creepy card. I think I have the the rainbow rare of that one, but the full art trainers perform much better than rainbow rare trainers. Fun fact, you probably knew that. We haven't seen an alt art yet from Chilling Rain in this, in this booster box, and that's okay because we did get the Sandaconda V alternate art from Fusion Strike, and we got a secret rare from one of those blisters as well, Astral Radiance. So it's not all bad, but I would love to see a Chilling Rain secret rare at least. I don't even think we've seen that. This has been kind of a dud of a box. Last pack here. So I'm just gonna say that. Careful what you uh, want to be true, and be careful in how quickly you believe it and that doesn't mean it's not true it just means like just be careful like 
most situations, there's just too much we don't know to really say with any conviction what's going on. So just be careful. Otherwise, you might find out that your hero did something really bad that you probably could have seen coming. But you should watch that documentary, Kai the Hatchet-Wielding Hitchhiker. Thanks, everyone, for watching this video and run to Costco and see if they have some of these tin sets. Worked out pretty well for me. We'll talk to you later. Peace.